Hello, this is Dr. Jim Thomas, and I want to welcome you to Fayetteville First Baptist Online. My hope and prayer for you today is that you're encouraged in your faith and challenged to walk toward a Christ-centered life. If you have any questions about today's message or would like to have more information on what it means to follow after Jesus Christ, please don't hesitate to email me at info at fayettevillefbc.org. I hope you're encouraged today. May God bless you. Oh, 
your heart can see Jesus. Amen? Let's continue to worship him this morning. He's going to carry us through. He's going to make us break through whatever the situation is.
count it a great privilege to have the opportunity to come and share with you this morning. Uh, it, is, uh, it, 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 it is a true blessing for me. For the past several years, uh, I share with them at 8.30, for the past several years, Jim normally is gone the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Uh, they usually go Thanksgiving week and run down to, uh, to Chipley and see uh, Laura's family and, and spend that time with them. And then he's usually gone the week after Christmas and they try to get out to uh, Texas to, to see his family and visit with them. So there's usually a Sunday after Thanksgiving and the Sunday after Christmas that is available for one of us to have the opportunity to, to speak and to share with you and to, to, to preach to you from God's Word. And normally, for the past several years, it has been my great blessing to speak to you on New Year's Day. Uh, and which is, I'm pretty sure if we check this out, it is traditionally the lowest attendance day of the year, you know. And I, and I think that's why I get it. But, uh, but so, so just to mix things up this year and because... I guess the figures that everything I got to say about a new year, y'all have heard before. So, so I get Thanksgiving. And what a great, great opportunity it is to come. And after spending this holiday season with our families, what a great blessing. How truly blessed we are as a people, as individuals, as a country. And to just get to rejoice and be thankful together. What a great time of Thanksgiving and how privileged uh, I feel to come in after this time and just not talk about Thanksgiving. We're going to talk about purpose and God's purpose in our lives and how He uses us for purpose. So I wanted to come and share with you a little bit about this. And I came to this in a weird, in a weird way. Uh, I really like when, I mean, when we're in the middle of a series and Jim says, here's your day. You're speaking on this. And, you know, you look in the middle of it, you got your verses, you got your stuff, and you just go to that one spot. But when he says, just talk about anything you want, you know we're all in trouble when, when that happens. So, so uh, you know, that's always tough for me. So I was trying to say, God, where, what do you want me to say? How do, wh where are we going to go with this? What do, you, what do you want to do? And I got to thinking about, and this is so weird, this is so weird, those old TV commercials where they would come up with the different products, you know, like the Popeil Pocket Fisherman. Who would ever think of that? Or the Chopomatic, you know, the Chopomatic, you know. It's a chopper with a hopper. It's not the knives that your wives and your daughters find in the dirty dish of water. It's Chopomatic, you know. And the Ginzu knife. How many people in here have a Ginzu knife? Orange handle, Ginzu knife, you know. They're specifically made for cutting through shoe leather, uh, the soles of your shoe. If you ever have a uh, tin can you need to saw in half or make julienne fries, uh, everything makes julienne fries. All these things have these weird purposes. So I said, is it possible? What, going through this, I started thinking, how, do, how does this apply to us? Do we have purpose? Where do we find in purpose? And I believe, I believe that we have specific purposes for specific individuals. I believe that there are broad, broad statements about purpose that are true. And I don't disagree with those. And I don't, I'm not attempting to say that's not right. I think those are true. We are, we are meant to have purpose in worship. We just got children are called to worship God. That's our purpose. We're called to honor Him. We're called for all those things. The last thing He told us to do was go and make disciples. That's our purpose. I'm, I'm down with that. But what about your specific purpose? What about your specific purpose? Is it possible that we have a specific purpose? As I got to thinking about that, so I started thinking about, you know, that great classic that Rick Warren wrote, The Purpose Driven Life. And so I thought, well, let me take a look at that. And I realized that I don't own a copy of that. I am the only preacher in America that doesn't own a, co a copy of that. Uh, read it 15 years ago, but I don't own a copy of it. But he says these things. He says he has five purposes. He says these things. We're planned for God's pleasure. 
We should worship Him. We're formed for God's family. We should have fellowship with each other. We're created to become like Christ. We should practice discipleship to become more like Christ. We're shaped for serving God. We should be ministering to each other. And we are made for a mission. We should practice evangelism and make disciples. I'm not opposed to any of those. Those are our broad purposes. But do we have specific purposes? I think just like specific things have specific purposes, we as individuals have specific purposes. So i got some pictures up here. And these are some, some, some things. And we're going to take a look at them. And I want you to tell me what this is and what's its purpose. Okay, so what is this? It's an air pump needle. And what's it for? To pump, pump an air into balls, into basketballs, footballs. Okay, these aren't hard. They are, they're no trick questions. All right, now what is this? It's a banana hook. And, and, and what's it for? For hanging bananas. It's, okay, here we go. Next. It's a can opener. It is a can opener. Is that a P51? Is that what that is? It's, oh, P38. Is that what it is? Okay, it is a can opener. Now, what is a can opener for? Open and cans. Very good. Next. It's a pitch pipe. This one gave 830 trouble, too. Uh, it's a pitch pipe. Uh, and I don't know what that's for. Uh, but it's for helping you get on pitch, okay? Next. It's a, it's a plane. It's for traveling from one spot to another. <laughs> it might as well be as if I was using it. It's a plane. It's for shaping and smoothing wood. It's a plane. Okay, what is this? Vice grips. Now, there's a comedian who's got this routine about where he talks about changing the channels. And I'm telling you, he's living in my house. In my house growing up, Think back, back to that day when you had to get up and go to the TV to change the channel, and you had to turn that thing, that knob you, you, to you, and, and you know, it clicked, and my brother and I, we'd go up and we'd grab it, and we'd just go, Bleh! and my dad, his head would explode. <laughs> You're going to tear that TV up. It ain't made for flipping around through them channels like that. Now, we only got, now, we got three. We got ABC, NBC, and PBS because you had to have a UHF t antenna to get CBS, and we didn't have that. So we got three channels, and we just flipped that thing around, and sure enough, we broke that handle right off. But not to be deterred, you just take a pair of vice grips clamp them right on that thing and just use it to change the channel. So, vice grips, they're for changing the channel. Okay, what do we have next? Okay, what is this? What is it? It's a flux capacitor. And we know that is for the purpose of time, time travel. That makes time travel possible. All right, thank you. Specific things, specific items Specific items have specific purposes. When you use the right tool for the right job, the specific tool for the specific job, everything's easier. I cannot tell you the different things that I've tried to use to drive a nail. <laughs> a rock, a shoe, a hairbrush, I, I, you know, anything, a pair, of, a pair of vice grips, you know, anything you can, they're, all, they're an all-purpose tool, you know. They're the original multi-tool, man. So, but it's so much easier when you use a hammer. A specific tool for a specific job, and I think that just like that, specific people have specific purposes. I believe that we have real purposes from God. In Jeremiah chapter 1, he says, I knew you in your mother's womb, and you will be an, a, a prophet to the nations. Now, we use that verse all the time to, to promote pro-life. 
that we believe that God has a purpose for that baby in the womb before it's born, that it exists beforehand. And I agree with that 100%. But it's not just that it's God has, it's that God has a purpose. And it's not just for prophets to all nations. He has a purpose for all people. And He has a purpose for you. So how do we, how do we fulfill that purpose? How do, we, how do we get into that? Now, before we get... Before we get into Scripture, as I'm, we're, we're going to try to unpack that. We're going to try to take a look at this. Is, does God have a real purpose for this? And I think that He has. And if you'll let me, and by let me, I mean if you don't get up and leave, we're going to take a look at how we can fulfill that purpose. Now, this may be a mess. I'm just going to tell you. It reminded me, as I was preparing this message, it reminded me of the very first message that I ever preached. Uh, well, actually, it was the second, but it's the first one that I, I came in view of a call and preached. But then the first once I came on staff, we were doing a true love waits thing. And the pastor asked me to, to preach the message. And I got in my head this thing with Rachel and Leah and how he waited uh, for his true love, how he waited seven years, and then he waited another seven years. And, oh, it was a disaster. And it, it was, I, it was terrible. And when it was over, Trig, bless his heart, walked down to me. Trig, who, who's always been a real supporter of Trig, walked down to me and said, Jim, that one confuses me too. So, so, so we're going to see if we cannot be confused. If you got your Bible... Open God's Word to Esther chapter 4. First time I've ever preached from Esther. Esther chapter 4. If you will, please stand in the honor of reading God's Word. I'm beginning with verse 5. And it says this. Then Esther called for Hatak, one of the king's eunuchs, who had been appointed to attend her. And he ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what this was and why it was. And Hatak went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him. And the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasury for the destruction of the Jews. And Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction. That he might show it to Esther and explain to her and command her to go to the king to beg his favor and plead with him on behalf of her people. And Hatak went out and told Esther what Mordecai had said. And then Esther spoke to Hatak and commanded him to go to Mordecai and say, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law to be put to death. Except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter so that he may live. But as for me... I have not been called to come into the king these 30 days. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said. And then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you, for if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews to be found at Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf, and do not eat or drink for these days, night or day. And I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king. Though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther ordered him. May God bless the reading of his word. Thank you. You may be seated. What we got going on here is, is the people of Israel had been taken away into exile by a king generations before. And as this had happened, they were living in this, in this foreign land. And in the political structure, in the political struggles that were going on there, a plot arose to destroy the Jewish people. And some, some deals were made, some backroom deals were made, and all these things were going to happen. 
that was going to bring calamity to the Jewish people. And at this time, Esther, a young woman, had been made a queen of the king. And as she was drawn in, now Esther was not there by choice, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. You know, they had this, uh, the, uh, for the, king, the queen that existed had been dethroned. She had been taken out. She had been taken out, and they needed a new queen. So they ran around and had a, a Babylon has beauty. Babylon's got beauty uh, uh, thing through all the country. And they found Esther and brought her in and made her the queen and put her in there. And she is in this spot where they're begging her, please go and intervene for us. Go and intervene for us. They're going to they're gonna destroy God's people. You've got to go and intervene. And she is in a ter terrible dilemma. So what does this speak to us about our purpose and about how we can fulfill our purpose? I think there's a couple of things that we can see here. Number one is, if you want to fulfill your purpose, first take a look at where you are. Now let me ask this question. How many people in this room are born, bred, buttered, and burnt? You are right here. You're a Fayetteville people. Okay, Pretty, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good crowd there. Now, how many people have been in Fayetteville for 20 or more years? Okay, a few more. Now, how many people are relative newcomers? And by relative newcomers, I'm going to say 10 years or less, 10 years or less. Okay, so we are, now in the first service, it was a few, a few natives, huge uh, 20 years or longer, and then a few people. We're pretty close to uh, maybe 20%, 40-40, something like that. It's pretty good. Let me tell you something. Your purpose is in Fayetteville. Whatever the, the reason that you are here, what has brought you here, whether it was that you were born here or whether that you were moved here because of a job, or whether that you moved here with family, or whatever reason you ended up here, God's purpose is for you here. God wants to use you where you are. We're constantly looking, saying, God, what's my purpose? Where do you want me to be? I want you to be right where you are, doing what I want you to do. God has placed you here, students, wherever you are, whatever high school, middle school, or university that you are attending at present, you will probably not live there. Now, some of you will live there longer than others, but, <laughs> but you will not, that will not be your permanent home. But you know what? That's where God's put you now. That's where he's got a purpose for you right now. He is not thinking about what's next. Uh, too many times we're thinking about, well, God, what do you want me to be? What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? How do you want me to do this? When you get up and go to school tomorrow... I got a purpose for you. When you get up and go to work tomorrow, I got a purpose for you. When you get up and go to the grocery store tomorrow, I got a purpose for you. The first thing about using God's purpose, about fulfilling God's purpose, is realizing it's where He puts us, it's where we are. And this is what happened to Esther. Esther was in this place that she didn't even want to be there, she had been living. She had been living with the nephew of her father because her family had been destroyed. And she was taken out of this only home that she ever knew and taken to this, to this castle. And it was probably a pretty good gig. You know, it, you know she's probably living in luxury and everything's probably A-OK. -okay. But who wants to live where you've been torn away from your family and you're not even in your, you're not only are you not in your homeland, you're not with your home, you're really in captivity. But that's where God put her. And that's where God had a purpose for her. And that's where God had opportunity for her. So when we look first, it's where are we? Where is God going to use us? How can, we, how can we fulfill God's purpose in our life? Is look around where we are. Now, might God send you on a short-term or long-term mission to another place? He very well may. But you know what? He's putting you a home, and he's not giving you 52 weeks off because one week you're going away on mission. Now, granted, some of you, he may be calling to the Congo, so, you know, get ready. 
But for the most of us, it's where we are. It's where we are. It's where we are during the day. That's where our purpose is. It's not some strange, it's not some strange other place that we go off to. Our purpose is found where God puts us and where we are. The second thing about fulfilling God's purpose, if we want to fulfill God's purpose in our life, the second thing is, what do you do? What is it that you do? And what can you do? Now, way, way, way too many times, we think that what I do isn't really useful to God. I'm, I, I sell cars. Exactly where people come in and you talk to them and you spend time with them and God has a purpose for you in your life in everything that you're doing. If we only take the people that have these special select jobs and say, you're the guys that have got purpose, all the rest of you, maybe someday you can have purpose. No, every day, whatever it is, you're, or what can you do? Is there, is, is there something that you can do? It might, be, it might be volunteering. It might be working in, in some program in the church, in ESL. It might be coaching Little League. It might be, it might be any kind of thing in one of the... It's, what do you do or what can you do? There's not special tasks. You know what she did? She sat around in her room all day and waited for the king to call her. That was what she did. That was her job. Well, I'm going to sit around here all day and I'll wait for the king to call. And when the king calls, I go present myself to the king. But God had a special pur- God had purpose in that. He has purpose in you. There's a, as I was preparing for this, I came across a story that all of you are familiar with. Well, I say all of you, but a lot of you are familiar with. It's not new. It's not. But a fellow by the name of Eric Little. Eric Little was a, his parents were missionaries in China. He came back to Great Britain to go to university. And as he was back in university, preparing, uh, back in Great Britain, preparing for his mission to China, he was tremendously athletic. He was a professional rugby player. He, they considered he was one of the greatest athletes in all of Scotland. And he was a great runner. And it turns out that he got opportunity to qualify for the 1924 Olympics. He was expected to win the 100-yard dash at the Olympics. And if so, had he won the 100-yard dash at the Olympics, he would be the first Scot to ever win a gold medal. You know this story from the movie Chariots of Fire. And how he, in this opportunity he had, he was supposed to run the race on Sunday. He told him, I don't run on Sunday. They took him out of it. He had to forfeit his opportunity. But then another person came and said, he's so much faster than me, let him run my race. And he ended up running the 400 meters, a race that he had never run in competition. And he won, won the gold medal, and the world was stunned. And now, 90 years later, we're talking about Eric Little. Here's the thing. There's a great scene in the movie where he's talking to his sister, and his sister says, Eric, God has called you to China. God wants to use you in China. You're wasting your time playing these games and doing these athletics and all this other stuff. And he looks at her and he says, Jen, God made me for a purpose. He made me for China, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. Because where he was at the moment, his purpose was not in the future in China. His purpose was in the present where he was. It wasn't in the future being a pastor and being a minister and and caring for the Chinese people completely for the rest of his life to the death. His purpose at that moment was being an athlete and using that platform to tell the world that there is a God that works out the things for his people that cares about that he is God and he is control. And his purpose was there and his purpose was sports when his purpose was going to be something very different And not too long, immediately after he finished university, he returned to China where he stayed until his death. When his purpose was there and his purpose was different 
I imagine that a great athlete played games and had sport, but he's never seen again as another competitive athlete ever again. And he died in an internment camp in China, caring for the sick and dying and hurting in that camp. He is a, a beautiful picture of a man that said, God, you got a purpose for me, and wherever you put me, and whatever you give me to do, I'm going to be seeking to fulfill your purpose. I encourage you to, to Eric Metaxas, the guy who wrote the book on Bonhoeffer, and William Wilberforce wrote a book called Seven Men, uh, The Secret of Greatness. Uh, great chapter on Eric Little in, in the book. Beautiful story. God, put me where you want me to be and give me something to do and let me find my purpose in what you have for me. The third thing, if we're going to fulfill God's purpose in our life, is you got to be willing. We got to step into the fray. You got to be willing to do the work. It does us no good to be where we're supposed to be and have the ability and to do what we're supposed to do if we're not willing to step up and do what God wants us to do. Nothing happened for the people of God in Esther until she said, You pray, I'll pray. I'm going in. I'm going in. You, you, I'm, I'm going. And if I die, I die. If I perish, I perish. So be it. But God's put me here in this castle, and He's put me and He's given me something to do. I'm in a position that gives me the opportunity to see the king, and I'm not wasting it. I'm going in. Guys, on your campuses, you're where you're supposed to be. You have all the ability that you need. God does not send us out without the ability to do what He desires for us to do. It's just a matter of not, will you make the choice to say, I'm doing it. I'm going in. I'm stepping up. I'm fulfilling my purpose. I'm going to do. Guys, in our jobs, in our homes, in our communities, it makes all the difference in the world when we say, I'm going in. I'm doing it. I'm going to make the difference. I'm going to do this. Now, this is where it gets a little, this is where it gets a little fuzzy. How do I know what it is that God wants me to do? I'm willing, I'm here, okay? I'm in Fayetteville, uh, I got a job, I come in contact with people, I'm here, but how do I know what it is that he wants me to do? That's what I really need to know, Jim. I'm willing to do it if I just know. Guys, we probably all miss 10 opportunities a day where God says, oh, there's one, uh, that one's gone. Uh, because we don't, we, we don't see them, we don't know them, we're not tuned into them. So how do we know what they are? I wish I could give you this magic formula. I, 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 you know what we really need is an app. <laughs> you know, we just had an app, uh, God's Purpose for My Life app. You know, if, you, uh, if we could get that, we would, we would be in business. Here's what I think. John 15, 5. I'm the van, vine and you're the branches. If you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can bear no fruit. If we want to know what God's purpose is for us, we've got to abide in Him. We've got to be connected to the vine. Sunday school answers. Spend time in God's Word. Spend time in prayer and listen in prayer. I really and truly believe, I really and truly believe that I do not spend too little time in prayer. I think I spend enough time in prayer. I really and truly believe I don't spend near enough time listening. I don't spend near enough time being quiet and saying, God, God, show me what to do. God, show me what to do. God, show me what to do. And then I go do something. When I haven't ever stopped and listened and said, God, tell me what it is. Help me pay attention to what you're doing so that I can join you in your work. Help me pay attention to what's going on. Help me be quiet. Everybody that knows me, Knows I talk too much and I listen too little. I think I'm not alone in that. Abide in me. Spend time in God's Word. Spend time in prayer. Listen to Him. Fellowship with God's people and take wise counsel. Take wise counsel. 
as others are encouraging you to be involved in different places, we cannot do everything. You cannot be involved in every activity of this fellowship. So, (laughs) that wasn't supposed to be so strongly endorsed. (laughs) But it's true. But you know what? God does want to use you. And he wants you to be involved, and he's got a purpose for you. And you've got to be aware, and you've got to be listening. Guys, believe me, I know how busy you guys are. I'm going to say this to you. It's not to hurt your feelings. You will never have more free time than you have right now. It's, I, believe me, I know how busy you are. Your students are busier today when I, than I was a student. You'll never have more free time than you do right now. Find what God's purpose is and do it. Listen to wise counsel. Put people around you and go to, and go to work doing what God wants you to do. He's got so much for you. Three things. Look at where you are. Find out what you do. Step into the fray. And we know what to do by being attached to the vine, knowing what we could, endure with God, stay with Him, and listen to Him carefully. That when we feel His purpose, but when I run, I feel His pleasure. Guys, there's nothing like being in the middle of God's will. There's nothing like being used for His purpose. You will feel His pleasure. As we come to the close of our service, I want to encourage you to ask yourself some questions. Where am I? What I do, how can it be used to glorify God? What can I do? Help me fulfill God's purpose. And then step into the fray. Step in.